ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವದೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿಕ್ಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ chapter 4 we are studying attachment versus detachment in that uh, we have studied a few levels of attachment material physical emotional egoistic and then the next one the religious which we are uh, which we will study today so the human being has an attachment to all this and we were talking in the grades of subtlety starting from material to physical to emotional to egoistic attachment is dependency detachment is not dependent again attachment equals dependence when we say a person is attached it means a person is dependent dependent on what whatever be the factor it can be material it can be emotional it can be physical it can be anything but uh, but there is an attach uh, but there is a dependency the dependency is because of lack of understanding that you should not be dependent on this you you become dependent because you do not understand that you should not be dependent you become dependent on it you get hurt you do not learn anything out of it and you go and get dependent on something else again so first you will get up uh, first you will become dependent on something and the dependency all forms of dependency has to end up in disappointment it can be any dependency it doesn't matter even if you are dependent on god also you will be disappointed with god suppose so i am not dependent on human beings sir i am only dependent on god vedanta says even god dependency will end up in disappointment because dependency is an expectation of protection what is dependency when you say i am dependent what is dependency in that there is a protection there is an expectation there is a hope of protection there is an expectation there is a hope so you say oh i am a very spiritual person i depend only on only on god and because i am dependent on god god will take care of my protection uh, god will take care of god will take care of my protections and then you find out that something wrong is happening to whatever you think as your protect to whatever you think is going to save you something happens to that A disappointment disillusionment come against god also meaning any form of dependency will result in disappointment subtler the area that you are attached to greater is the pain dependency causes pain as your dependency goes subtler and subtler your potential for pain is becoming more and more and more that's the difference so there is a there is a dependency and then there is something there is a dependency also there is something called a pain followed by that expectation 
So you can never have an expectation and not have any pain following it. So naturally what happens when there is a pain, the mind will move on to the, to the next, to the next, to the next. So thus the mind keeps moving from one attachment to the another attachment, from one dependency to, to another dependency. So what are the dependencies that we have seen till now? The first one we saw is material. Dependent upon material wealth, because in that lies the protection. Then comes the physical. You acquire material things for the physical protection only. <laughs> That's why if there is a, a if there is a health issue, you are ready to sell your house also, isn't it? You are ready to sell the house to save the body because the attachment to the body. It goes. From then comes the then comes the, the material, the physical, the emotional, the egoistic. <laughs> emotional attachment is where there is a where you have a hope of somebody is going to give you love, you will get attached. Where you believe somebody is willing to take your love, you get attached. So there are two, two ways it happens. Where you get to you get your love, at the same time, you have a hope of giving love, you have a hope of receiving love. That is emotional attachment. And then what happens? It's not that you don't get love, you get it, but again the again the same disappointment, frustration, all that continues. Egoistic level. If you can easily get rid of the attachment at the material and physical level, emotional egoistic level is more complicated. Spiritual level is all the more complicated. Greater than the blinding darkness. That is Isavasi Upanishad. That is spiritual attachment. What is spiritual attachment? You, you get attached to something. And that attachment, if, if all these four are blinding darkness, that is greater than the blinding darkness is a spiritual attachment. It means what? You need to use all this but you should not be attached to any. That is the, that is the connection. What is this egoistic attachment that we were studying last? We'll continue from there. Hmm? Yes. So after the emotional Swami, she says egoistic. Why is it not referring to the sexual level? Is it different or are they same? The question is material, physical, emotional, then it should come intellectual. Why egoistic? There cannot be an attachment at the intellect. It is the ego that plays there. So even though we can loosely call it as intellectual attachment, what is intellect? The capacity to distinguish. That's all. This is wall. This is the door. This is food. This is non-food. A simple, a simple distinguishing, discriminating factor. That's all it is. It's like uh, there is not anything that you can directly get attached to the intellect as such. Because between the two that you discern or discriminate, you may get attached. But the very faculty of discrimination, you cannot get attached. You cannot get attached to the very, fa the very faculty of discrimination. It just happens by, it happens. Are you able to follow? Intellectual attachment is always about relating to intelligence and ego. Even though some, in some context we talk about intellectual attachment, there it is attachment in relation to intelligence or ego. Intellect has the discriminatory function, 
there is no attachment possible but something at that level can be attachment that is ego honor and dishonor in the bhagavad gita he says sitoshna sukha dukha da that at the level of the body it is heat and cold at the level of intellect it is honor and dishonor so it is at the level of the ego so there what do we do we 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 loosely use ego and the intellect as very synonymous but you should not say intellect equals ego intellect in, no that is intelligence the arrogance that you gain out of intelligence i know there is an there is an arrogance there is an attachment to i know that is not intellect that is that uh, that comes to the intelligence even though loosely we call it as intellectual attachment intelligence is also part of ego also yes hmm are you okay just understand intellect as a discriminatory function what is intellect it discriminates between food and non food between the door and the wall i will not try to walk through the wall i will try to walk through the the door it's a simple discriminating function that's all attachment to intellect will be used in a very loose sense of ego and intelligence so instead of saying it as intellect it is much easier to understand it as egoistic level that's why intellectual level of attachment as such is not described or loosely in some context we call it as attachment to the body mind intellect attachment to the body mind intellect we say that also in a in a context in a loose way we say attachment to body mind intellect attachment to body mind intellect. now what we mean by intellect there is not attachment to the discriminating function attachment there uh, uh, attachment to intellect will be used in the sense of honor dishonor intelligence egoistic level all that are you okay till now ego is comparison again discriminating function is happening what is ego go one step deeper first we understand what is intellect discrimination and all that we understood uh, and the answer looked very convincing isn't it now we go one step deeper and say what what the 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 answer that we gave is very wrong because what is ego ego is nothing but compare ego functions through what what is the function of the ego how does ego function it is through comparison only if there is no where there is no comparison there is no ego where there is no comparison ego cannot exist or for ego to exist what is needed comparison is needed are you able to follow egoistic level means constantly constantly comparison it's a constant comparison and this goes this is so so deep very difficult to very difficult to understand it first of all and much more difficult to get rid of it the egoistic level that's why instead of calling it as intellect it is easy to understand it as egoistic level for which we need to understand what is ego ego means ego is comparison you understand so ego exists in duality yes ego exists only when i compare myself with the other the presence of the other is not ego understand that the presence of the other is not ego ego comes into play only when you start comparing you versus the other in what way in whatever way it can be any way but it is always you versus the the other are you able to follow the biggest problem is as we think we are getting more and more civilized it is ego that is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger what we call a civilization is nothing but a bunch of 
a bunch of strong egos put together because it is it is constantly through it is constantly through comparison even though we talk about love sacrifice ego comes in and say who has sacrificed to more isn't it even though we talk about love who loves more the very fact that you start asking who loves more what has entered ego has entered who sacrifice we both love each other but the other person cannot understand how deep is my is my love comparison has are you able to follow so even though we even though we use the word love we use the word sacrifice all big words we use in and through all that what is functioning ego 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 in the sense of comparison are you able to follow now ego in the sense of comparison it is what is ego let us discuss a little bit about ego you will understand so many things we said i am trying to recollect now so many things about ego we discussed ego i feel that i am nobody and if i have something i will become somebody that is ego ego starts from where as i am i am nothing i am nobody if i have something i become somebody and that somebody is a meaningful existence and what should i have i don't have a i don't have an educational qualification i should get an educational qualification i don't have wealth without wealth i am without wealth i am nobody nobody respects me nobody pays any attention to me because i don't have wealth because without wealth i am nobody now what i should do in order to become somebody i have to uh, i have to acquire wealth so the moment i acquire wealth i believe i believe i am somebody in comparison to whom to somebody again are you able to follow this example without beauty whatever my concept of beauty is i feel i i feel i am nobody therefore what do i have to do i have to become fair isn't it fair and lovely isn't it because black and lovely cannot exist na isn't it black and lovely how can it go exist so i have to become fair so what do i do i am not fair if you are born here how can you be fair will be yeah. you will be only yes. so what do you do you have to become without that i am nobody and if i become that i will become nobody. so well beauty without family i am nobody so if i have a family i become somebody so i i try to acquire a, a family because wherever i go people are not respecting me because i am i am not a family person suddenly i feel oh my god if i become a family person everybody will start paying some attention isn't it ego is always a feeling of being somebody becoming somebody that is ego from where it comes from where it comes a deep sense of comparison i see it here i see here i see here i see here extroverted nature extroverted nature i am seeing outside all the time and when i see outside all the time there is a so what do i do the moment i look outside i will start i will start comparing this child is doing well this child is doing well this child is doing well my child is not doing well or this child is listening to the parent this child is listening to the parent my child is not listening to 
to me which child ever listens to the parent isn't it child means you should not listen to the parent then only it is a, a child if it start listening to the parent na then there is something wrong with the entire unit there isn't it so evaluation starts first thing ego is through comparison second <laughs> demands there is a material demand there is a physical see like a physical demand like okay imagine if you can have only four idlis you will demand four idlis that's it it's okay it is satiated demands of the ego are endless how much ever you feed it will ask for more and more and and more demands of the ego is okay how much ever other praises you there is still little bit more place for you to listen to praises no correct somebody starts praising you somebody starts honoring you there is always a little bit more extra gap in you that that can be filled isn't it some more some more praise correct how much ever is given ego ego consumes all that in a in a split second how much ever attention is given how much ever is given ego consumes all that in a split second and remains empty forever very well follow no what is ego everything is provided but ego consumes everything in a split second and it says i am i am empty i am empty i am empty now what is ego now always a sense of empty. emptiness it's not that you don't have anything you have so much but the ego has consumed everything because it demands are it's so insatiable that demands are so much that how much ever is fed it it, it always remains empty if you understand the ways of the ego you get freedom from the ego ego feeds itself in either way shamelessly it will feed itself in either way that's why they say kala pudi kalthu pudi they say isn't it ego will fall at the feet or ego will ego will strangle the it does, shamelessly it can do both in order to get what it wants in order to get what it wants it, it, ego is that shameless entity no you can't go and see, you can't go and talk to the ego about pride knowledge all that doesn't work as far as the ego is concerned because ego is a ego is a shameless entity either way it will satisfy the ego either way at at times if it satisfies through superiority at times it will survive through inferiority if it says i am i am best and survives it will say i am useless and it will want to do but it can never be without ego to be that ego less is very 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 difficult hmm? ego has to show that it carries a big load on the shoulders always it has to tell others that i am carrying a i am carrying a big burden you all don't know how much i have to take care you all don't know 
have to get up. The way they describe making coffee, you you'll get tired listening to that, isn't it? It feels that it, it has to tell others that it is carrying a huge burden. That's ego. Can't uh, it has to? Are you able to follow? Yeah, no. Ego says, "You don't know, sir." What all responsibilities I have. The ego says. It wants to show that it is carrying something which is which is big. Hmm? What is that example? That's why you always give the example. First we'll go to the mythological character. Atlas. Huh? That fellow who carries the the person who carries the whole, whole earth on his shoulders. You should ask him from where he is standing and holding the earth. No? Standing somewhere, holding the earth. It means what? Who is carrying? What is carrying the weight of both now? See, he is standing somewhere and carrying the earth. It means somewhere he is standing, isn't it? If he is standing somewhere and carrying that burden, actually what is carrying both? Something other. Ego cannot accept something other is helping. Ego has to say, it is all. I am carrying the heavy load. Are you okay? Ram Tirtha puts the same thing in a very different way. The person sitting in the train, carrying the luggage on his head. The person sat in the train, carrying the suitcase on his head. The co-passenger said, why don't you put it down? This person said, I cannot put it down. Why? I don't want to burden the train anymore. Why? Because as it is, the train is carrying you, carrying this, carrying that. All that I can do is, at least I will not burden the train with my suitcase. Looks like a very... When he says that, you feel like prostrating to that man, isn't it? Looks like a very, very humble statement where he doesn't want to burden. What did the fellow passenger said? Foolish person you are. Why? Anyway, the train is only carrying you and the suitcase. All that you have to do is what? Put the luggage down and enjoy the, enjoy the train journey, isn't it? Enjoy the train journey. Ego cannot do that. Ego believes it carries a huge burden. Are you able to follow? Ask, ask anybody, they'll say, I have no time. Why? Because their responsibilities, they have such a huge burden that they have no time for anything else. Are you able to follow now? Why don't you do something better? They say, I have no, I have no time. Why? Because the burden that I am carrying, I have to prove it to others that my responsibility, my burden is much bigger than what you are carrying. Srikanth, Purita. Ningalamu burden is but my burden is slightly heavier. Are you able to follow? Ego survives in that. Whether you like it or not, have you ever observed? She can't. Can you jagar the other? Most of the wives have a much better life after the husband dies. Have you ever have you ever observed that? Not all, most. Have you ever observed that in your life? Have you ever thought even why they feel like that? What is the relief? The burden. That man is sitting in the head all the time. Now that it is, are you able to follow? It's a burden. And then they have to say what? And then the ego has to say what? 
my burden is bigger than yours my burden is bigger than yours and when somebody comes and says my burden is bigger than yours you will get you will get very upset because you will say what no no one mother in law and one husband what a burden i am what a burden i am carrying with one mother in law and one husband what is your problem are you able to follow two human beings that's all but the ego starts ego is upset are you able to follow ego is so upset that it cannot to an extent where they talk about their okay extension of it is what a person says i am sick i am sick i am sick you tell the person you look very healthy today what happens are you able to follow a person every day you meet the person the person complain i am i am sick this is paining that is paining ta it is paining stomach is paining my third leg is paining my fifth hand is paining there is no third leg there is no but then they 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 imagine all that and it starts paining 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 ha huh? try it out one day before that person starts complaining about their disease tell that person oh you look so cheerful and so healthy today and see what happens to that person what do you think will happen they will not say thank you what they will say what will they say you are mad you don't know what is happening you don't know what is happening inside me why because you don't know with all the burden i am doing what i am doing you go once etc are able to understand now with all the burden i am doing what i am doing i cannot say i am so free divine is supporting everything i am just doing what i i am just doing what i could do it is taken care of by the divine hmm are able to follow most of the time it's not a burden at all the ego boast it the ego boast and you talk to everybody everybody talks about their about the blessings they talk or the burden they talk hmm what do they talk about are able to follow from another angle look at it like this when will you call a person boring or oh, this person is too boring you say no when they will complain one hour they will complain you are patiently waiting for you to start complaining the moment you start complaining the person cuts the conversation and walk out what will happen are you able to follow what will happen there what will you do ini avar thalam pesave kuda sir why because he is not allowing he is not giving you a chance to he is not giving you a chance to show off your to show off your complaint what is complaint complaint means you are saying that you are carrying a a burden are you able to follow what is complaining that's why a spiritual person there is no complaint at all because there is no there is no burden about anything are you able to follow the difference now there is no burden about anything but the ego always feels a the ego always feels that it is carrying a heavy it is carrying a very heavy load heavy load of what hmm load of what imaginations so imaginations last example last example for this for this ego having a burden <laughs> have you ever heard anybody saying that i grew out of joy and bliss have you ever heard anybody saying 
I grew in life out of joy and bliss. Everybody has to say, I grew in life out of pain, sorrow, suffering. Are you able to follow that? What? That's the ego. But actually growth happened out of, out of what? Not through pain, sorrow, suffering and all. It, it happened out of joy and bliss only. But nobody can say, I grew out of joy. So, supposing if I say, I grew out of joy and bliss, my ego has no standing there. Supposing if I say, I suffered a lot. No. I suffered a lot. Congratulations. <laughs> I studied under the street light. I walked the 10 kilometers to the school. How you are all blessed. What all things you all got. Comparison to all that. You all don't know how much I, I lived in the tent. I lived here. I lived there. Oh my God. Are you able to follow now? It's When it was going through that, it wasn't a burden. Carefully follow. Carefully follow. When you are a child, when you are studying in the street light, it wasn't a burden at all. It was just sheer. It was just sheer fun. No crying happened then. Are you able to follow? But now the ego has to compare. And how and now the ego has to say what? That's where it's madness. Are you able to follow the insanity of the ego? Breathe up. Oh. It has to at that time it wasn't. How much I saw? It, it was still. Cycling to, cycling to school, walking three kilometers up and down. There was a, you are not walking all by yourself. There is a group of people walking. You shared the jokes, you fought. All, all fun happened, isn't it? So what the ego should say? What is the right way of saying it? I grew up in bliss and joy. Correct? That's a Actually, that's a correct statement. What the ego says, see, for you and all, everything is given on a plate. So, so easy for you to grow, but you do not know my life. What is my life? Nothing was given to me on a plate. Huh? Everything was given to me also on a, on a plate only. But the ego has to prove that it, it, it carries a, it carried a burden in the past, or it is carrying a burden in the, in the present. Never it can say, never ego can say what I have no, I am free. Because the moment you say free, it will start feeling useless now. Because when it's, when it's carrying a burden, huh? are you able to follow? When it is carrying a burden, others will certify. When you are carrying a burden, what is the ego expecting? Hmm? A certification from the others. What is the certification? Oh, wow. All this, you, came, you became like this? Wow. Are you able to follow? It talks about the burden only to get a, only to get a certification. Yes. I don't understand the term carrying the burden. Can you give me from the perspective of a husband or a wife or burden. some relations? Okay. Now she wants husband and wife. Yes. Uh, okay, just as an example of burden. Then, then I got her. Then I'm okay. A burden. Okay. Simple example. When the other person asks for a cup of coffee versus you want to give a cup of coffee. Husband and wife, she asked to know. So I have to give an example. Narayanji. <laughs> when I ask for, not me, not me, not me. I don't ask only their, their problems. I'm so egoistic that I don't ask. <laughs> That's another problem. Are you able to follow? Where... You want to give versus other person asking. Are you able to follow? When the other asks, what do you feel? What do you feel? 
pressure isn't it burden that's all the burdens you follow what i am saying when you give when you give you are being charitable ego that are you able to understand the difference when the other is asking who are you to ask don't you have hands and legs can't you make your own thing are you able to follow when the other is asking ego takes that angle when the other is not asking the the ego takes another angle that is why we really do not know what to do with the ego because either way it, it makes you to suffer are you able to follow if it asks it will say pressure okay if it doesn't ask what it will do freedom ah huh? indifference he doesn't care he doesn't bother can't even ask for a glass of water ask there is a problem don't ask another problem are you able to follow doing on its own doing on its own it feels so superior when the other is asking it has to give if i am doing on my own i am a giver are you able to follow i am being very charitable so what the husband believes i am being charitable in doing something for the family the wife says i am being more charitable than you then doing something for the other. so what is the what happens between the two now so when the other ask is a pressure for me yes if i am doing on my own i am being charitable to the other yes and if no asking is happening then i am in the friend then then you feel the other is not recognizing your presence so it means what the ego wants are you able to understand the scenario now it means what the ego wants ego just want two three toys around ego just want two three toys around that's all the ego wants smile in the toy should smile are you able to follow when i am having a headache and the other smiles i am having a headache and the other smiles it is intolerable when i am smiling and the other is having a headache what happens are you able to follow i have a headache and the other is smiling srikant purita now the other is having a headache what do i say always complaining 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 sir are you able to follow purita so in the ego demands what what is the demand of the ego the demand of the ego is slave ego always wants slaves slaves means my command you listen yes i will command when i am smiling even if you have a headache when i am smiling even if you have a headache what should you do smile correct i am i am having a headache even in even if you are in a joyful mood what you should you do correct why because why because the ego is always focused on from all this what do you understand what is ego now intense self focus for example another example you can never get tired of looking yourself at the mirror do you know that you can stand in front of the mirror look at yourself come back and again look at yourself you can never get tired have you ever noticed it hmm? nothing will happen isn't it sometimes i may even comb my hair in front of the mirror now isn't it i have you ever noticed that you don't get tired of looking yourself at the mirror why that's the ego self self attention in order to give self attention 
in order it wants attention from what it will get attention the others only so ego becomes so dependent on the the ego becomes so extremely dependent on the other because attention comes only through the others therefore what does the ego do in order to get attention it will start doing anything if it has to please it will please it will have to pretend sick it will pretend sick if it has to throw a tantrum it will throw a, a tantrum hmm? it will threatening suicide also at times you follow so all this put together all, all put together is when i carry a load who feels superior the person who carries heavier load avladha there is a person carrying 1 kilo there is a person carrying 5 kilos there is a person carrying 15 kilos from outside who looks who looks superior the person carrying 15 kilos therefore everybody has to prove what i am carrying a slightly heavier load than all of you i am carrying a heavier load than all of you is the attachment at the egoistic level everybody follow no this is called attachment at the egoistic level are you okay then comes attachment at the religious level But till now we finish all the four if all this is materialistic kind of ego and attachment the spiritual level is a totally different the spiritual level is a totally different kind now we will read the spiritual attachment we have to study we have to read that no venkat religious ah so we will read the religious level and then we will see what they are saying religious level religious level the most devastating quality of the human mind is its fanaticism towards religion the mass of humanity is fanatically attached to one's religion few identify with the quintessence of religion and there is no attempt to understand the underlying truth of religion the truth which integrates humans into one divine soul which reveals the supreme reality of life every human being is like a river consciously or unconsciously determined to reach the ocean of reality religion provides the essential expertise for individuals to merge with the ultimate being the repository of infinite peace and bliss <clears throat> the word religion etymologically derived from latin terms re and ligare means to rejoin <clears throat> the sanskrit word yoga derived from its root yuj means to unite both indicate the spiritual course for a seeker to regain his supreme self hence your mission in life is to study spiritual literature contemplate upon its truths and attain your divine being but the mind is involved and attached to the affairs of the mundane world your primary obligation is to avoid the mind's enchantment for the objects and beings of the world and reach the self within you need a powerful intellect to prevail upon the mind and maintain objectivity until you gain spiritual enlightenment now attachment at the spiritual level material level physical level emotional level egoistic level all four can be combined as one group 
religious level is a totally different entity. Why? Because to get freedom from the four, the person comes into religion. To get freedom from ego, to get freedom from the emotional attachment, to get freedom from the attachment and uh, uh, to the body, weakness over the wealth, a person come into religion. Having come into religion, the mind gets attached to the mind gets attached to the religion itself. The spiritual ego takes a very high moralist angle. First problem. We will discuss it step by step. The first problem of the spiritual ego is it takes a very high moralist attitude. With that moralist attitude, it will criticize and condemn everything. So the first problem of spiritual thing is what? It will carry, it develops an ego, a moralist ego. Most of the times, we think the road to hell is paved by negativities, no? The road to hell is paved by good intentions. The so-called good intentions, which is nothing but spiritual ego. So that's why of all the attachments, spiritual attachment is what is described as the worst. To remember the Upanishad, it says, greater than the blinding darkness. If all the four are blinding darkness, material, physical, emotional, egoistic are blinding darkness, this is greater than the blinding darkness. So the first thing is what? A benevolent ego. A benevolent ego, the spiritual ego, is more complicated than all other things. Second, because of the belief that it is noble and spiritual, it believes that it can guide others. First, first is the belief that it can criticize and condemn. Second is a deeper conviction that it can it can start guiding the others. And when it starts guiding the others, okay, to put it in a very simple way, a worldly person can easily say, I don't know in many areas. A spiritual person cannot say, I don't know in any area. Have you ever noticed it? <laughs> the so-called spiritual person can never say, I don't know in relation to anything. Because about each and everything, that person will, will, will have something to say. At least a worldly person will say, I don't. I don't know. That's why this ego is Far more, far more dangerous. Far more dangerous is this ego. Hmm? A moralist ego takes a stance that I am above mistakes. That's why even if somebody says there is a mistake, it will try to prove that it's not a mistake at all in the first place. It says, it's your perception. You, didn't, you are not seeing it rightly. I don't make any mistakes at all. Why? Because
30 years I am going to Vedanta class. No, how can I make a mistake? The only mistake is coming to class for 30 years. Isn't it? Otherwise, other than that, there is no other mistake. Or all mistakes stems from, or all mistakes stems from this fundamental mistake. Hmm? In the other areas, you will make a mistake and you will try to correct them. In the area of spiritual, a person who thinks that person is spiritual, what the person thinks? It tries to prove that there is no mistake at all in the, in the first place. And the moment you try to say that it is not a mistake at all in the first place, first thing is what? If somebody says you made a mistake, you are displeased first. That is the indication. Again, I repeat. Somebody says there is a mistake. You made a mistake. Instant reaction is what? No. Instant reaction is no. No means refusing to correction. No means refuse to correct. On the contrary, I will bring in all my logic and reason and everything to prove that it's not a mistake at all in the first place. Are you able to follow? Because you do not know the fact that so you are calling it as a mistake. So what you will do, you will try to bring in more and more and more. What you call as a fact to prove that there is no mistake at all. Spiritual ego has this deepest problem. That's why the Upanishads says, Worldly darkness is blinding. Spiritual darkness is greater than the blinding darkness. Greater than the blinding darkness. To get freedom from the four, you come here. You come here and you get involved. Where will you go? That's why it is blinding. See, you want freedom from the four. What is the four? The material, the physical, the emotional, the ego. You understood all four are troubling you. You want freedom from that. And you come here seeking solution. Coming here you get, you get involved in that. What happens? That four will look much better than this. That four looks much better. That four will look much better than this. Therefore, the Upanishad says, the teacher always says, the spiritual ego is Dangerous. The most of all the attachment, the worst attachment is attachment to religion. Hmm? The moment you say, I am right, you can't say all are right. Correct? The moment you say all are right, I am right has no meaning. So, if you say I am right, automatically what happens? The other is wrong. I am right means you are, you are wrong. Hmm? Why do I say I am right? I know. So, go through the steps. I know, you don't know. Step one is very clear. I know. You don't know. The moment I am so convinced about that fact that I know and you don't know, what is the next logical step that the mind will arrive at? I am right. You are wrong. Now, what has happened? Two things has happened. What are the two things that has happened now? I know, 
I am right. You don't know, you are, you are wrong. What will be the third one? Hmm? What will be the third one? I know, I am right. You don't know, you are wrong. Does it stop here? No, it doesn't stop here. The third comes. That's where the ego has reached its deadliest point. Hmm? The spiritual ego. What is the third point? Three steps. First step is I know. Supposing if I say all of us know, then the statement I know doesn't make any any sense. Therefore, if, if, if in order to say I know, I necessarily have to say you don't know. So I know, you don't know. What will be the natural next step? Since I know, I'm right. Since you don't know, you're wrong. Third, devastating step. What is the third step? I know, I am right, therefore, I am very important, indispensable. Pridhan, Pratov, I know, I am right, therefore, I am indispensable. You don't know, you are wrong, Therefore, you can be easily dispensed with where it believes that it is the most important thing and rest all can be massacred, slaughtered. This is the spiritual ego. Are you able to follow the steps? I know. I am right. Therefore, I'm yeah. Logically, Srikant, then I got it too. Yella and the Rio Nanda Sari Abdina Yaru Rumbo Mukio. Who is very important? I am very important. You don't know anything. And, and if you don't know anything, obviously you are, you are wrong. So, what I can do to you, I can simply, I can simply dispense. That's why we, we that's why we. That's why we can just keep dropping and dropping and dropping without any, without any kind of remorse whatsoever. Why? Because I know I am right. I know I am right. Not only I know I am right, I also know that you are wrong. Because I am right only in comparison to a state where you are wrong. This is what is called as the spiritual ego and this attachment is worst than all kinds of attachment. This attachment is worst. Then the question is, where is the remedy for this person? Then the question is, where is the, where is the remedy for this person who is wandering in greater than the blinding darkness? What is the, what is the remedy for that person? From the beginning, from the beginning, Practicing detachment. From the beginning, practicing detachment. That's what you are going to study later. Next week we will do that. We are not going to take it up today. What is the remedy then? Okay. No point in continuously poking and poking and poking. What is the solution now? In their wisdom, they give the they give the Solution also. In their wisdom, solution is given. What is the solution?
wherever anybody points out your ignorance, boldly accept that person as your master. The child comes and tells you, you do not know. Boldly accept the child as your master. If, if, if somebody comes and tells you, you don't know, learn to boldly accept anybody who exposes your ignorance, learn to accept rather than defending it. What is the way out? Now, stop defending your ignorance. Stop defending your ignorance. In that defense only you are getting deeper and deeper. Are you able to follow now? The moment you start defending your ignorance, you, you get deeper into ignorance. The moment you start acknowledging the one who is exposing your ignorance, you become free from ignorance. <clears throat> We all persist in protecting our opinions and attitudes. That's why we perpetuate ego, spiritual ego. That's why we are. That's why we perpetuate our spiritual ego by sticking to our opinions. Not realizing that what we have as our opinion is nothing but what is your opinion? Ignorant by nature. How do you say your opinion is ignorant by nature? When you do not know who you are, how can I say I know? You don't know who you are. But you say, I know I am right. That is spiritual attachment. That is spiritual attachment. Remembrance of ignorance leads you to liberation. Remembrance of your ignorance leads you to liberation. Defending ignorance leads you to blinding darkness. Don't defend. That's why the child can learn very fast. A grown-up cannot learn at all. Are you able to understand now? A grown-up should be easily able to learn faster, no? Because they have, uh, because of their experiences in life, they should know that I do not know. So, so knowing should be much easier when for a grown up. But then, what do you see in life? As you so as you are supposed to age, stubbornness is increasing. Have noticed it? As you grow old and old and old, you just become more and more and more stubborn. <clears throat> In fact, there is no growth at all. Body is aging. That's all. Body is aging. Ego is getting consolidated. <laughs> what is the way out? That's why you give the example of the child. Huh? Child doesn't have a problem of saying, I don't, I don't know. The ego has a problem of saying, I don't know. Because if I say I don't know, I will look like a, I look like a, like a fool. In whose eyes? In your own eyes, not in the eyes of others. Because anyway, the other believes that you are a fool only, isn't it? Therefore, it is never in the eyes of the others. If you say, I don't know, you will look like a fool in whose eyes? Vijay, Purida, Idu Purunjitana, you will never, you will become wise strictly. If you say, I don't know, you look like a fool in the eyes of whom? In your own eyes. 
because you believe that by you pretending to know the other is going to certify you that you are wise and in that certification you are blinding yourself that's why the wise one doesn't worry about certification as in honor or dishonor are you able to understand the difference now if i say i don't know i look like in whose eyes i look low in my own eyes not in the eyes of others how do you say that everybody is so caught up in their own ego that nobody has time to recognize everybody is so caught up in their own ego nobody has time for anybody else if at all if at all they seem to have time for somebody else means there is a mutual catering going on if you have time for somebody and the other has time for you know mutual catering going on the moment mutual catering stops nobody has time for nobody has time for anybody you know big talk only isn't it it's all big it's all big talk nobody has time for because they have no time for themselves from where they will get time for somebody hmm? so very difficult is this is spiritual ego why because at least in the worldly sense you can say i don't know comparatively easier but the spiritual person cannot say i don't know interview any swami you will never hear the word i don't know they will always have an answer for nuclear physics also they will have an answer medical science also they will have an answer legal problem also they will have an answer they will have an answer what is happening after death also they will have an answer you know it goes here it stays there now as though that person is actually seeing it so simple to say i don't have you ever noticed it so funny it is whereas others can say i don't know this person cannot say i don't know dangerous is this attachment that's what upanishad says blinding greater than the blinding darkness greater than the blinding darkness don't defend your ignorance is the way out then what is the way out don't defend your ignorance don't don't perpetuate don't protect it how do you all defend the ignorance the moment you make a statement the moment somebody makes a statement you will you will want to counter that statement by bringing in what you call as a fact to prove that what the others talking about you is is wrong why me being a spiritual person how can i ever go wrong are able to follow the spiritual ego now at least in a worldly sense i can go at least a worldly person can believe i can go wrong a spiritual person has his ego what is it ego i can never go wrong then what is the solution then hmm? what is the solution then only solution detachment what is the solution detachment hmm such a great joy in correcting the other and vanity in not admitting my mistake a joy in correcting the other a joy in correcting the that's why we want to give knowledge all the time we want to give knowledge now why do you want to give knowledge there's a joy in correcting the other the spiritual ego cannot admit its mistake though it is eager and pleased to 
make the other admit and correct. First, it will manipulate and make the other accept the mistake. And then what it will do? Lifetime, that person is massacred, isn't it? Lifetime, you can massacre the, lifetime, you can massacre the person. Why? Because it's a stake. Ignorance is a false claim of knowing. What is ignorance? A false claim of knowing when I actually don't know. Yeah, then I ego. Bajagovindam, 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 Mudamate. There we distinguish between the fool and an ignorant person. <coughs> Who, sir? Who is the one who is attached to spiritual path? We don't call that person as ignorant. We call that person as a fool. And what is the difference between the fool and the ignorant? Ignorance says, I don't know. Willing to? Correct. Fool says, fool says, I'm always right. You just have to recognize my all of them. Are you able to follow now? The ego says, I'm always right. All that is needed is what? Sir, Vedanta is correct, sir. People in the world are all blind, correct. How? There's nobody recognizing my greatness. How great I am, so great I am. Nobody is recognizing my, my greatness. You are correct, sir. Vedanta is very, people are all, why? Because nobody is certifying that you are great. Not only they are certifying you, they are, they are insisting on a certification from you. What? Accept that I am superior to you. Ego will pretend to accept when it wants a benefit in return. Ego will pretend to accept their superiority when it wants a benefit in in return. It pretends. Ego, ego knows how to. Ego nale pretentiousness. Na. Ego itself means pretentiousness. It knows how to pretend. To get what it? Attachment to spiritual level. So, we spoke about five levels of attachment. What are the five levels of attachment? Material, physical, emotional, egoistic, Spiritual, religions. Of the five, group the first two four into one. Of the five, group the first two four into one. Comparison to that, this is worst. Better to be a materialistic person and grow rather than being a spiritual, so called spiritual person and Devolve. Hmm? Last conclusion. Attachment to spiritual ego. What is attachment to spiritual ego? Blind leading the blind. What is attachment to that one blind person hmm, believes that I am not blind. And he proves to others that he is not blind. Who are the, who are the others that he is proving that he is not blind? Aparna. A blind can prove to others that he is not blind. Who are the others? Equally blind. So one blind person will prove to the other blind person that I am not blind. And so what happens? That blind person will start following this blind person. Thus, he says, the Guru Parampara continues. Thus, the Guru Parampara continues. What is the Guru Parampara? One blind person leading this blind person and this blind person leading the next blind person. Where the Parampara will end? Group discussion, it will end. It will end in the group discussion. Yeah. Where everybody will start correcting. Where everybody will start guiding. 
<laughs> Everybody gives and guiding each other. Then what is the way out? There is the way out. There is the way out. As they are, there are, without giving the way out, it's just poking. So beautiful, the Shastras are so beautiful because if they don't have a way out, you should not poke at the others like that. They should just leave them like that. But they keep on poking. Why? Because they have a, they have a solution. And what is the solution? Detachment. And how to, what is that? And how to go about it? We will see next time. With this, we conclude for. Do we have anything, Venkat? Yes. Anshu has raised her hand. Ah, yes, Anshu. So we mentioned that ego does not have anything of its own. This part I'm not able to understand. Ego doesn't have anything of its own. It's empty, no, all the time. The moment you say, I'm having this, you cannot complain. You cannot complain of emptiness. You cannot complain of nothingness. You cannot do anything. Are you able to follow? So ego means what? Emptiness. It has to be convinced of its emptiness and continuously try to fill that emptiness. It cannot say, I have this much. It has to say, I am empty. Are you able to follow? Yes. Only the emptiness gives a conviction to the greed. Only the feeling of emptiness gives a conviction to the indiscriminate acquiring, indiscriminate hoarding, all this, even though the Shastra keeps calling it as indiscriminate, the ego feels it as very legitimate. Why? Because ego at the core feels empty. What is the other method? Purnam. What is the other method? Purnam. Purnatvam. Emptiness is a myth. Emptiness is hallucinatory. Emptiness is a myth. What is the reality? Purnatvam is a reality. So how do you counter this? Purnatvam is the solution. So what is ego that feels always empty? Is it okay, Anshu? Yes, sir. my question uh, was because ego, we think that we are so much, uh, yes. that we are so full. We, we normally in uh, our day-to-day -day communication, we say we are so full of ourselves. Yes. <laughs> we are so full of ourselves in believing that I am so empty, I have nothing. Only if I get a few, I will find the fulfillment. When we say we are so full of ourselves, Anshu, what people mean is, I am so full of having convinced about my emptiness. I am so convinced about my emptiness. That is why I need to... The very accumulation comes from where? Emptiness only. The very accumulation comes from what? I want to accumulate for today. I want to accumulate for tomorrow. I want to accumulate for my afterlife. And I want to accumulate for my children's afterlife. Accumulation. 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 The constant drive for accumulation. From the emptiness. So we are so full means. Nobody is saying Purnatvam. Gratitude. Thank you. Are you going to follow? Yes. No ego if you say, I grew out of joy and bliss. Gratitude it is. Gratitude is to say, I grew out of joy and, and bliss. Ingratitude is to say, I grew out of misery, sorrow, suffering. Self-made man. They say, isn't it? I am a self-made person, sir. No father helped. 
no mother helped no brother in law helped no father in law helped but he i am a self made person ah ego this is you follow opposite of that is what nobody can do anything by themselves without the support of other therefore what is egolessness egolessness means recognizing that i am supported always ego says i am supportless i have to support myself egolessness says i am supported always everyone knows the difference now ego says i am supportless i am hanging in mid air therefore i need to i need somebody knowledge says i am supported already knowledge says i am supported already that's where the question clear atlas is holding the whole universe on his shoulders where is he standing if he is standing at some place as a result of it if he is holding that means what is holding both not him isn't it are able to follow that's how we that's how we should understand is it okay anshu yes sir thank you with this we conclude and we continue with detachment next week